Okay, so welcome back after that break to the Black Country Rock Show. Um, we have another very special guest for you today, so a uh, two-in-one show that's extra special. Uh, we're very pleased to welcome Brian Tatler from Diamond Head with us today. Thank you for joining You're us. You're welcome. Fresh from the Sonosphere Festival. Yes, that's right, last weekend, yeah, really, really uh, amazing festival and, uh, you know, great for the band to, to be doing a festival that big really at this stage in the, in our career you know, mm. so well you just awesome. keep going and going don't I know, you? The, yeah, the legend we, we just don't that. seem to stop do we i think that's something we've learned really that if you keep going you know people can offer you opportunities to do stuff but uh you know if you if you if you're not no longer active you can't really get it together quickly enough to, to mm. respond to to work and mm. you mm. you kind of need to be uh ready and you're about to go on a Quite a big tour as well, mm. aren't you? And a US tour, yeah. no. again, that's something that doesn't happen very often to this band. Uh, so I think the timing's right, really, because of, you know, we got Sonosphere, uh, we were offered that gig around January. Mm. Uh, so we'd been talking about doing a US tour, but because we, we thought, well, it's, it's going to generate press, uh, so it will help sell a tour. In America, because we're not really w very well known in America, we might there might be people who who've heard of the band maybe through Metallica, yeah, Metallica. but mm -hmm. the, the albums aren't readily available over there, not to my knowledge anyway. And uh, we've never really played over there. We've played once or twice, but nothing really. Uh, so this will be the first proper tour of America where we go from, you know, um, East Coast to West Coast. Oh, oh really? Oh, right. Sorry, the other way around. West Coast West to East Coast. Coast. Yeah. yeah, and we go all across the country, so Fantastic. a few thousand miles. Yeah. Wow. Seventeen dates. Wow. Good grief. Yeah. Over how long? Over eighteen nights. Wow. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, yeah. Your, your fingers are going to be tired. It's not <laughs> the my fingers I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lack of sleep, is it? <laughs> I do. <don't know> <laughs> but what I am worried about is the. The old singer's voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. he's pretty good. He's, he's been very lucky so Nick. far. Nick. Nick. Mm. Yes. Uh, I mean, we did a tour with Megadeth and we did 22 dates and he, would, he did every single one. Lovely. Mm. But that was probably 45 minutes set and we were doing five days on, one day off. Uh. Whereas this is, I think, seven days on, one day off, nine days on. Oh, my <laughs> wow. goodness. And, and this is an hour 15. And it's it's a much hotter country. This was, you know, Europe. The Megadeth tour was Europe, so you're in Scandinavia, and, you know, places yeah. like that. Cool, Denmark. cool countries. With yeah, moisture. 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 Yeah. We were in February. Yeah. But this is the middle of summer in Texas or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Not oh, Texas, dry but throat. yeah, it could yeah. easily yeah. have problems. In the Midwest. Somewhere. I mean, as a vocalist myself, mm -hmm. I, uh, I understand the pain of if you're tired. Yeah. Constantly yeah. singing through it. And and you can't drink yeah. any alcohol. We're gonna have to yeah. be very firm. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as he finishes the show, straight to bed. Straight to don't bed. Talk to to bed. Don't, don't talk to us. Don't talk to any fans. Yes. Uh, we'll cover that. <laughs> 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 we'll sign the autographs for you. Yes, yeah. that's right. So he's gonna have to be uh, a good boy on that tour. Yeah. yeah. So Diamond Head, for, um, we, uh, we've gone straight into what you're doing now. We yeah. haven't said where, you know, where this comes from. Diamond Head are uh, considered, you know, really one of the most important bands in the new wave of British heavy yeah, metal. I suppose. Arguably. Of, I suppose yeah. of that period, yeah, yeah, that genre, the new wave of British heavy metal, yeah. yeah. And you were the founder of the band. Yes, I was. I formed the band, I mean, back in 1976 with, uh, with our original drummer, Duncan Scott. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm formed in my bedroom and we, before we even had a drum kit we used to uh, use a you know it's a well told story but we had a yes. biscuit tin drum kit I read. Yeah, <laughs> the biscuit tin drum kit <laughs> with uh, you know that was set at the end of my bed and then I had like my brother's amp because my brother used to play guitar so I used to use his equipment and borrow mm. his guitar and things like that so the band was put together like that and then we just did the search for the singer mm. and we were all still at school so I just went around the school pretty much and and asked if anybody could sing and a couple of kids come down and they couldn't sing and then eventually Sean Harris came down and he could sing yeah. so I thought right he's the he's the man for the job let's have him and uh, that was him and looked no further oh. and, and just started writing songs in my bedroom with a cassette recorder uh, the biscuit tin drum kit and my brother's guitar and that was it Bob's your uncle. Yeah. I read that, that because your first demo was I was reading it's recorded in some kind of six hours or something ridiculous and yeah. that was what got you your first yeah it was. well i think i mean because of things like that we got 
probably the support with ACDC. Yeah. And we got on local telly and sounds. We sent a copy to Jeff Barton. It was our first demo of five songs in six hours. Yeah, it cost 25 quid. Good On great. four track. Yeah. Amazing. Four track. And then <laughs> sent track. it to Jeff Barton and he put it in his playlist, you know. Uh, so that was big deal to us, you know. Yeah. And it just, it did snowball once... Once we started getting a bit of uh, attention, you know, around 1980, um, and uh, I, I mean, it took us quite a while to get a, a record deal, but we, we, we managed to do our own album because we, we, at this point we got a manager come along and sort of uh, made it a, a studio available for us. Mm. So we recorded a proper album. I mean, that only took a week to rec record and mix, which mm. is, is that, pretty quick. Is that the album that's? A white yes. cover, the a blank cover. That's right. Yeah. Why a blank cover uh, with some autographs on it? I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was cost. I think it, I think it was, like, we recorded the album cheap and then tried to get a record deal with it and then they did, nobody wanted to sign the band. So the, the manager said, OK, then well, we'll just sell it ourselves. We'll put it in, out as mail order and we'll sell it at gigs, £3.50 at the gigs. We had a thousand copies pressed. And I would imagine he just thought it's too expensive to get a cover done mm. uh, and artwork and, you know, just like. So just doing plain white cardboard sleeve. And, it, and then yeah. it didn't even have anything on the disc. <laughs> the di you know, oh, no. it didn't even say Diamond Head on the disc <laughs> or anything. So white disc, it looked like a test pressing, you know. Mm. So the, the fans would bring it backstage and say, What's the name of the songs, you know? <laughs> What's the second track oh, called? I didn't even called? say the, the no, song no, listing no, or anything. Nothing, oh my no God. information at all. No picture. No, didn't, didn't say diamond. Didn't say anything. But they're worth something now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah it's collector's items. Must be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only a thousand copies were, were pr printed. Like Have that. you got one? I've got one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't lose it. Don't, Don't lose it. it now. No. Don't let oh. anyone borrow it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> So then what happened from there? So you produced the first album? And yeah, I mean, we, we did a couple of singles ourselves and we did the album ourselves. And that, that got fairly good press and certain journalists seemed to really love the band and get on board. And, and then there was, there was articles in sound. It was all sound before Kerrang! Oh, right. Sounds magazine. And they used to say, why will no one sign this band? And, and we used to get these rave reviews. But... Somehow we couldn't seem to get a record deal, and it, I don't know if it was partly the management that maybe people liked the band, but they thought, well, they're being looked after by this guy who's never managed a band before. He runs a cardboard oh. box factory, and the singer's mom. And oh, I, I and I, I, I sometimes think maybe they thought, I don't think they're capable of taking the band to the top, oh. uh, but because it's the singer's mom, he's not going to want to fire his mom okay. and get you know, yeah. agent, manager B involved. Uh, so we had a little problem, probably get a record deal, and in the end we, we didn't get signed to 1982. Mm. Uh, and the guy uh, from MCA signed us after he'd been to see us several times and, and probably fell in love with the band, but, but you know, couldn't, uh, couldn't not sign the band. You know, it became like his passion to, to get okay. the band signed to, to yeah. MCA. Well, that's good. That's so that yeah, that was good, yeah. but uh, but really, I mean, uh, two years had passed between the first album and the, the album we did for MCA. So in a way, the band had progressed and changed quite a bit. Yeah. So when that album came out, a few of the fans were a little bit, oh, you know, why well, it's different. Well, it's different, yeah. Uh. They changed direction, you know, and then by the third album, we changed direction again, mm. and we kind of uh, lost a few fans along the way, like that. Yeah. You had quite a tough time yourself, didn't you? Because didn't the record company insist that you change some of the members of the band? Yeah, well? the, some labels wanted that. They would listen to the, the demo and say, we like the band, but we, we wanted to change the drummer, for mm. example, you know, get another drummer in, things like that. So it's often the way they, yeah. you know. Mm. Uh, we didn't want to do that, really. Um, but in, as I say, in the end, MCA did sign us. Uh, but then on the, on the third album we did Canterbury, we ended up, sacking the drummer in anyway because when we were doing the album it, it seemed to be taking ages to get the drums down mm -hmm. and uh, we were in a really expensive studio and every, the pressure was on to get the, you got to get the drums oh. down first because you can't do anything else yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to layer on top of the drums yeah. so, so we, had, we had nightmares the clock <coughs> as well. yeah. mm. and uh, 
the producer was pointing out the drummer's inaccuracies by mm. saying, like, he's not hitting the snare drum exactly the same each time, you know. Mm. But of course, he is not a machine, is he? Mm. Yeah. But I think I think he'd just done an album with Def Leppard, and, and so he'd, he'd been used to this perfect environment, and it's all, everything's perfectly in time, everything's perfectly in tune. And along come this garage band, and uh, he, he wasn't prepared to... Uh, let stuff go, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Go, oh, it's got a bit of a vibe about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, well, it's not. It's not perfectly in time, yeah. so I'm gonna have to stop here and do it again. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that went oh, on yeah. for for a while, yeah. and and we sacked the drummer, and then the bass player quit because he just decided it was it, not more fun anymore. You know. Yeah. Uh, so the band were, were two. We were down to myself and the singer then, and then we just you know we got other players in, and but. Even though you, you could get a different player and a, a better player, yeah. the vibe changed, changed. Yeah. and uh, whatever we had, you know, we mm -hmm. no longer had anymore. Yeah. We had something else, mm. and the band. We had, then added keyboards to the mix, and and I think we probably lost our way a little bit in, in the early eighties, around eighty four, eighty five. Yeah. And you were you were doing acoustic versions for a while. Yeah, we right? did that. We tried that. <laughs> Two thousand, that was. Yeah, mm. it was. A kind of uh, idea, just an idea, really, to try doing acoustic versions. It was fairly popular at the time. Mm. Unplugged, mm. you know, mm. MCV, Nirvana, and all that. Lot. So it seemed like, well, why not? Because you, you've got a guitarist and a singer. Mm. Yeah. You haven't really got a band, so mm. give it a go. And uh, we tried it. We did about ten gigs, and we did an EP, but. It, it was <laughs> it was probably a waste of time, really, because oh. the gigs were little small gigs, really. Mm. And uh, the EP took eighteen months to record when it should have taken like a week, you oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just, in the end, I was just sick of it, and I I, I couldn't wait to strap my Les Paul back oh, on, you know, uh. as you would know. Yeah. Strap that guitar on. The sustain. Yeah. I, I miss the sustain and the power. Yeah. It's quite hard work playing an acoustic guitar night after night, yeah. and. I think the position you have to sit in yeah. uh, was not right for me. I, I started to get like neck pain and my posture wasn't right, I don't think. Yeah. So, I, I don't know, I just didn't... I think it was the singer liked it because uh, you're not singing over the power yeah. of a band. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. can be a bit more flowery and uh, take the song in different places. But when you're singing on top of drums and bass and guitars... Uh, you, you've kind of got to have, have a you lot have of power. To go. Yeah. 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 So uh, I, I find it. I mean, I use in ears myself right. now, but yeah. I like to have one ear out right. so that you can, you can yeah. really feel the yeah. feel the drums behind you. Yeah, the energy. Because, yeah, you need it to yeah. get the to get your voice in that in <laughs> right. that vein. Yeah. 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 So uh, I think he liked it, but I I didn't like it, and I was glad when he kind of fell by the wayside, so, mm -hmm. and then uh, we we carried on for a while. As a proper band again, getting in a, the drummer who's with us now and the bass player is with us now, Eddie and uh, Carl, mm -hmm. and uh, we did we did some dates. We did the UK and we did we did a gig in New York and things like mm -hmm. that, and then uh, started making an album here. Actually, oh, really? yeah, mm -hmm. we did an album here, but uh, it never came out, <laughs> uh, and that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I first met you, that was um, <clears throat> two thousand. Probably four, four, yeah. 2004, um, you just got Nick in the band. That's right, yeah. yeah. We were at Great Linford as well, That's doing right. that album, yeah. Yes. How did you meet Nick? So yeah, that's <laughs> cool, it's cool. Uh, okay, we did a gig without Sean. We did, we'd been booked to play Wacken while we were making this album here. And uh, uh, in the end, Sean didn't decide he didn't want to do it. So, so did the rest of us wanted to do it. And this guy who helped book the gig, it was just another singer, uh, said, well, I'll do it then, I'll sing, we'll do a couple of, you know, Diamond Dead songs, because he was in this band called Tigers of Pantang, you know, Jess Cox, Jess Cox so, yeah. Yeah. so he did a couple of Tiger songs and we did some Diamond Dead songs, and we kind of did the gig and, and that was it, but I thought, uh, what we should do is get another singer, because if if Sean's going to be like this and, and say, no, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, then... Um, we should get another singer, and if if an opportunity comes along, then at least we've got a singer ready to go. Yeah. Mm. So we yeah. started looking, and our drummer went to a rehearsal to see a, f a drummer friend of his who, who who got this band together, and the singer happened to be this chap Nick Tart, and uh, 
they played a version of rock and roll, the Zep song. Mm. Mm. And of course he thought, well, you know, if you can sing rock and roll, yeah. that's yeah. not an easy song to sing. That's no. very high. Mm. Yeah. So, especially for a male. Uh, so he got his number and we, uh, I met him and I went to see him in this little band in Wolverhampton somewhere. And I uh, thought he was great. And uh, so we started getting together and we rehearsed some diamonded songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought, yeah, he's, he's going to be fine. And then it just grew from there. We started writing together. We did an mm -hmm. album. And then we got offered that tour with Megadeth in... Uh, that's right. You know, for yeah. we, we did in February 2005. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, if we hadn't have made that choice and, and got Nick on board, mm. we, we couldn't have done it all like that. So it, it was uh, fortunate that, that we did. Yeah. Mm. I, th I, I, st I, st I remember the, the very first yeah. rehearsal with Nick at, oh, in right. Birmingham. Yeah. I think, in, in, um, I think, you, I think we, were, we were thinking about putting together a video yeah. At some point, and Nick had just learned a couple of the tracks. Yes, that's right. right uh, yeah. And it was a real steamy summer night, and we went to Birmingham, and we, you had the big room, the big rehearsal room. Yeah, it's just room in Madhouse. Mad no, Madhouse, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I remember you were there with your camera. That's right. Capturing, <laughs> capturing, <laughs> capturing the right moment. Right in the beginning, yeah. That's right. And uh, that was early days of Guitarist TV. That was oh, a, really? Yes, a really. Oh, right. f first, I mean, Brian's band was probably the very first band I ever produced a music video for. And we did that at JB's. That's right. Yeah. And before, 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 before the first gig yes, with Nick. With Nick. That was December 2004. That's right, yes. Yeah. And we decided to, to use one camera, and the, bla the band actually played the song um, a couple of times, um, and then I moved the camera from musician to musician okay, until we'd done all right. the musicians, and then we did an overall shot, and that was it. And we put it all together, and... Um, you know, Brian changed a few things here, there, and everywhere. Once we were happy, that was a <laughs> job done. <laughs> it was great, wasn't it? And there was so much energy in that band. I can remember mm. being on stage, and and holding the camera, and and of course everything was coming out through the monitors. You know. Yeah. And there was so much raw power. And and, and it's but it's a, even better now. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's way better, way better now. Better now. I mean, that was yeah. then, and yeah. you know, that's seven years, years ago. ago. Can you believe Good it? Good grief. Oh, so oh, it's word. it's improved immensely I since then. It, yes. Yeah, the band sounds amazing now. Uh, yeah. The footage I've seen, I mean, I, 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 I never, I don't consider myself to be into heavy metal. I'm more, you know, classic rock. Like, oh, I, I love I love your sound. Good, I really good. love Thank it. Thank you very much. Mm. And, and in fact, Metallica always yeah. hail you guys as the people that inspired them. What, what a great band to, yeah. to uh, you know, yeah. to credit Diamond Head with, isn't oh. it? You know, and you've, su you've supported them a few times. Yeah, we've supported right? a couple mm. of times now. I mean, probably mm. we've supported them three times, but mm. uh, we, I've been invited on stage with them as well to, yes. to play a Diamond Head song with Metallica a few times now wow. as well. I mean, I think it's about five times now. Oh, my goodness. That's I've funny. lost count slightly. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the last two, two gigs we just did with Sonosphere at Nebworth and then Sonosphere France. Mm. And uh, at Nebworth, I did Am I Evil with the big four. Oh. Yes, you know, yes. Which was amazing. Really? Well, the big four is Metallica, yeah. Slayer, yeah. Megadeth and Anthrax. Right. And yeah. then at the bottom of those Diamond Head, yes. opening for the big four. Amazing. And then being on stage with the big four as well, going through a Diamond Head song, Am I Evil? Yeah. It don't get much better than that, no, does it? <laughs> Haven't you written an, an autobiography as well? Oh, I have I indeed. Evil? Thank you for bringing that. <laughs> 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 yes, it's available through the website, yeah. www.diamond-head.net. And it's nearly all been sold, actually, because I, I released it in 2009. Mm. Uh, so most of it is sold through the website, and I've some at, at gigs and stuff. Mm. Uh, and there's a few copies left, if anybody wants one. And yeah. It's and gone well. Are you evil? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. It's just a good title, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Am I evil? I don't think so. I'm not a mass murderer. <laughs> just Bonus, a, yeah. Just a guitarist. He's a great X man. Uh, hey. Hey. Oh. <laughs> hey. Very good. Oh God. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I am pleased with the book though. I'm happy that uh, I got it all out on paper, you know. Ne it needed to be told that mm. story and uh, mm. a lot of people would come up to me and say, What happened to this and how come you didn't do this and so it's all in the book now, you know, instead of me keep retelling these stories, yes. uh, 
it's all there in black and white, you know, and I won't forget it, you know, as I get older and forget things. Yeah. At least it's down now in paper, you know, yeah. pr in print. <laughs> so you just refer to the book? Refer to the book. Refer to I'm, the book, please. Yeah, I must have done that, yeah. Chapter six, See page book. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to the book. I couldn't have <laughs> done it. Listening. I couldn't have done it without <laughs> word. You know, I couldn't, you know how people used to write by hand? Yeah, yes. Yes. Or typewriters. Mm. Yes. But with, with word, you can move sections Stuff around, around can't you? Yes. Know? Mm. I'd suddenly think of it, oh, I remember what we did in 1978. So you could just go to that relevant chapter and chop the whole block in, couldn't yeah. you, Don? Whereas if you'd have been writing it, oh, by oh hand, God, you'd you know, actually, yeah. Cut a bit out. <laughs> this piece has got to go. There. Sticky tape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you'd have done it. But with Word, you can do what you like and send it to people and they'll send it back with spelling corrections. And mm. yeah. I think that would be better at the start, you know. Yeah. So so how long did it take you? 18 to months. 18 months. Because yeah. I'm not a top fast. I'm not, yeah. you know, That's a typist. A, 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 I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm a one of them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you can do this. For a manager. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Same I know, thing I can't. Absolutely. So what would you say your guitar of choice is at the moment? Les Paul. It has been for a long time. I used to, I played the Flying V and I'm sort of known for playing a Flying V. Mm, and mm. I, I try and play the Flying V at the gigs because people want to see it. And mm. it it's an image, it looks good and all that. But I can't wait to get the Les Paul on because I just think it's a bit more... A bit more solid sounding and a bit more, um, f you know, it's harder to play. Uh, uh, no, the V is slightly harder to play. And it also feels a little fragile sometimes. Mm. I'm, I'm a bit scared of breaking it. Yeah. Whereas the Les Paul, you feel like you could throw solid. it and, solid and it could land. In yeah. and still have, you, have you ever tested that out? No, I just feel <laughs> like you could. It looks hard, you know, it looks, it looks like a solid chunk of wood. Yeah. Whereas the V has broke a few times, like the neck, you know, it's fell over. And yeah. Smash and have to yeah. fix. Oh, no. Whereas unless if Les Paul falls over, yeah, it's just picking up again. Carry it's on. fine. It might yeah. have gone out of tune. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in the worst case, that's about it. Yeah. So Les Paul, yeah, and uh, I've got a couple of Les Pauls, and I, that's what I use mainly. Mm. One question: when uh -huh. you when you travel, um, airplane, and you pitch up, and uh, do do you put your guitars in in the in the hold of the plane? Usually, usually yeah. they won't let you take them on as hand luggage because yes. they're too big, aren't they, to go mm. in the overhead lockers? Yeah. We had, we, a couple of times I've been abroad, and they've said you can. One time they said we can put them in the the, the stewardess's cabin or something. Yeah. Oh, right. And there was a little upright thing, and you could put our guitars in there yeah. and and shut the curtain. And lovely, that was that was nice. great. Mm -hmm. But mostly, I'll say, do you mind? Can we take this on the plane? And they go, no, that's got to be checked in. Right. So oh. off it goes on the conveyor belt. Oh, and no. and yeah. then you see them throwing yeah. the plane. Well, I'm looking at them in the air with a big pile of cases. And yeah. there's you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Don't God. look. I've seen it. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that happens. Sometimes you can take it to the plane and then get them to put it on. Yeah. I've not done that. Normally, they just either have it off you. Oh, they take it to oversized baggage. Yeah. yeah. But it still just gets shoved on Shook the plane. Yeah. Yeah. And at one gig we come back from, you know how the conveyor belt comes out, mm. and isn't our guitars aren't on the conveyor belt. No, so we go, oh, okay, over oversized side. baggage. So we go over to oversized baggage. No, we haven't got them either. And it turns out they they didn't get on the plane. Oh, oh, they were no. they were still in Greece or somewhere. Oh, you know. No. So they said, That's "What's your address?" And and they turned up next day. They brought them to they our house. Them, yeah. yeah, that was lucky. So that was good. Yeah. But if I'd needed them right there and then, we'd have, you know we're off to. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, so well, yeah. In fact, I've gigged in, in uh, one of my bands, the Tarantinos, before in Switzerland, and the guitarist guitar never turned up. Right. And they were ever so vague on the desk as to yeah. where it might be. They yeah. said, well, according to our records, it, it got on the plane, so we don't know where it is, which, of course, <laughs> filled the guitarist with yeah. so much confidence that he was going to get it back. It was fine. Yeah. They got it to him the next day, the first... The first date we had to borrow a guitar and yeah. off somebody. But it's uh, not the same, is it, as no. your own guitar? No. no. You can use back line, but you always take your guitar, yeah. Yeah. don't you? Yeah. So we've been, I've been travelling with a soft case, mm. with a guitar in a soft case. And for many years, uh, you, you just walk on the plane with it. Yeah. You know, with your normal hand luggage and the guitar is a, uh, slung over the shoulder, pops, bag goes in, guitar goes in the top. Yeah. And it's been lovely, but recently uh, I went to South Africa, and before I could get on the plane, I had to pay ninety quid, uh, and then I could take it on the plane. Um, 
want what was that for? For extra, extra, extra baggage. Extra baggage. Extra baggage. Extra yeah. baggage yeah. 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 But it was three o'clock in the morning, so I had, you can't argue. Yeah. You, know, you either leave the guitar here or yeah. you pay 90 quid. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, uh, you know, I had so they let you take it on if it's in a soft bag, yes, but not in a hard case. But I've just been to Bulgaria and exactly the, okay, there were seven guitar players going onto the same plane, yeah, all carrying guitars, and they had a bit of, of a hissy fit about that. And right. said, No, sorry, <laughs> go on, take them on the plane, huh? I've got to go in the, in the hole. So, and you've got it in a soft bag, so yeah, yeah what did you do? So, then? we had a we, we have you got plan B? Then? Plan B was to. <laughs> Negotiate very nicely with the with the person in charge, and we actually took them down to the little trolley and put them on the trolley ourselves. Right, and yeah. then they drove off and, and put it into the and them on the plane <laughs> 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 underneath some other heavy case. And then just just don't look. Yeah, <laughs> but um, and they when we got to Heathrow, they brought them to us at the at the um, okay at the, at, the, at, the, at the walkway somewhere along the walkway. You sort of stop halfway, and they come up. And again, and every, everything oh, was uh, yeah, they were very nice Bulgarian airlines, very nice people. Right, mm. yeah. trying to remember, remember that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, not <laughs> that useful if you're travelling to the US, for no, example. No, no, but no, never no. mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's in what's in the pipeline for you after the tour? Mm. We've, We've got, got one in Turkey. Oh. We, I mean, we're off to Canada next weekend. That's so. That's oh. that's going to be good. I've never been to Canada. Oh, yeah. uh, Montreal, Toronto, and Montreal. Mm -hmm. oh, lovely. Two big festivals, so that we're really looking forward to that. Excellent. Somewhere I've always wanted to go, yes. yeah. never managed to before. Yeah. And then, yeah, after the US tour, we've got one in Turkey at something called the Masters of Sound Festival in Istanbul. Excellent, oh, right. fantastic. Never right. been to Turkey? Yeah. Do that as well. That's a good thing. Mm. Get a bit of tan? Yeah, there. Well, well, maybe, maybe, you never know. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you're up in the day, I've seen that weird coffee that, yeah. that's really strong. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> takes your head off. <laughs> <laughs> Try this. But uh, we'll s we just see. I mean, things yeah. things keep coming in. Coming you know. in. We've been offered bits and bobs for next year. Mm. We have to just kind of it, myself and Carl, the drummer, pretty much uh, make the decisions mm. yes. to what we actually going to do. Is Carl still living in New York? He is. Yeah. He lives in New York. And yeah. he comes across to England. For yeah, yeah. He just flew over to do Sonisphere. Yes. Uh, and uh, went back after France. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, because he's in America, he's been able to help with this tour. Of We've course. got an agent over there now called yes. Dean. And Dean and Carl have been the ones on uh. the phone and the mails mm. making this happen, really. And without Carl living over there, it it'd been a nightmare, yeah. I think. Because yeah. he's you been able to sort out the van and the, the back yeah. line and uh, hotels. Accommodation, travel. All the, kind of yeah, stuff. all the things that... You forget it's got to be done. Yeah, the you know the nuts and bolts mm. of, a, yeah. of a tour. It's okay just booking a few dates, but you got to figure out how you're going to get there and mm. what. Where you're going to stay? Well. Yeah. When you pack up, who's going to pick up mm. the gear and take it with you? Mm. So with there's you. a lot of uh, stuff that Carl's been doing behind yeah. the scenes, yeah, which has been a big help. Excellent. And are you li still living in Starbridge? I am. You're about it's about ten miles away, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's just yeah. up the road. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. up the road. We yeah. were talking earlier about the Starbridge Rock Cafe, which I know it's changed yeah. its rooms. It's now. called the River Rooms. It's the River Rooms. Yeah. Room? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you done that? Several times. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah once and with Graham Bonnet doing yeah. his backing okay. vocals, but as in a, a rock band, Planet of Women, and we were. Planet down there of Women. Yes. That sounds a bit of fun. It's named after a ZZ Top song. I was yes saying that. But yes, Mark who runs it. Yeah, Mark. He's a really yeah. nice guy. Help, yeah. Yeah. You must have played there a few times. A yeah, time, we've done it a few times. But this time we decided to do the Slade Rooms as, as a oh, warm up. Yeah. Mm. Because they've got some biker do on or something with the oh, weekend perfect. we wanted to do. Mm. So we did the Slade Rooms and that was really good. Excellent. Never done there before either. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's that's kind of our only Midlands gig, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but we needed to do a warm up before yeah. uh, Nebula, and and that was fine. It was great. Good. Mm. Thank you so much for coming down to no that. No problem. It's, right. it's been yes, really good to see you much. again. Yeah, and you. Yeah. Long time. Long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long time. And, 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 and to, to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Well. you. Yeah. Yes. Good yeah. luck with yeah. the tour. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. I'll be Watching avidly on YouTube, yeah, any footage. Yeah, bits and bobs, won't yeah. they? Will, bits yes. of news. Thanks Good luck on yeah. the US tour, mate. Yeah, cheers. And uh, we'll maybe talk to you when you come back. Yeah, That'd okay. Be good. Mm. Yeah. yeah, all good. All good. Okay. To all our viewers, thank you very much. We'd like to thank Brian Tatler from Diamond Head for being with us this afternoon. So, from me, Mike Diego. And me, Nina Clark. We'll see you soon. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. We're going to do some news of this one's called This Planet to Me off the new album coming out. Yeah. Just go easy with it This life is
Hey!